ladies and gentlemen. Last week, we only talked about the five priority industries in NIMP 2030. This week, I get to visit a PLC in Busan, Malaysia that is riding on the wave. QES Group, perhaps. Before I really look into this company, I always thought that QES is just a company that distributes ATE automated testing equipment to semiconductor industry. Until I look into their website, I just realized, whoa, they're actually supplying to all five priority industries. Interesting. Hey guys, it's Hei Chuan, your investing friend. QES Group is one of the leading provider of ATE in Malaysia. You must be thinking, what the heck is ATE? Nani? Never mind. Let me explain to you. ATE stands for Automated Testing Equipment. Last time, when the equipments are not so chunky, we need to use like microscope to inspect any defects in the components. We need to manually adjust the focus, la, the stage, la, the position la, to capture the defects. Then when we slowly evolve to use semi-automated microscope, we still need to use our eyes to detect the defects even though the microscope is automated to adjust the focus or the position for you. A fully automated testing equipment, ATE, bring this process to a whole new level. Nowadays, our chips are getting smaller and smaller. But you can bet your leo. Nowadays, the chips are thinner than your hair already. Zoom in now, your eyes also cannot see. Ya. That's why all these companies need to buy AOI from QES to inspect the defects in the components. And the computer will automatically detect the defects. Don't need to look at your eyes pajel anymore. Same goes to other market segments like agriculture, la, mining, la, other sectors. Different market segments require different machines to do quality control to make sure the end product meets industry standards. Besides AOI, they also sell AHS and SMS which are automated handling system and smart manufacturing system. They will help manufacturing companies to become smart and improve their efficiency. There are two business segments in QES Group Bahad. Number one is distribution segment and number two is manufacturing segment. On distribution side, they are like a middleman. They sell many brands to their customers. Uh, for example, the famous ones are Nikon, La, Hitachi. La. These segments generate about 87% of their total revenue. They will import the machine and add value by customizing the machine according to their customers' needs. And most of the components that they check are going into the EME automotive and pharmaceutical industry. On manufacturing side, they specialize in making high precision motion control equipment for all set companies like Inari la, MPI la. In simple words, it's like a robot that can move tiny things around accurately and it is used to assemble tiny parts. Besides, they also provide after-sales service to their customers like maintenance or replacement of products. Mind sell sell. This after-sales service actually generated 20 to 25 percent of their total revenue, which is around 50 to 60 million ringgit recurring income every year. Well, let's talk about things that I like about QS. QES is financially strong with a consistent net cash position. Currently, QES has a net cash of 78 million ringgit. That is like 16% of their market cap. So it is quite healthy, I would say. They want to expand or to be defensive a bit during this semiconductor down cycle. Also, Hakuna Matata. Number two, these companies cash flow is quite strong. This means that the company is not some growing company. Look. Number three, their customer base is quite diversified and there's no over concentration in one single customer like most of the semiconductor companies in Malaysia. If the company don't want to order from them anymore, then they GG. QES don't have this risk. Number four, QES is riding the wave of NIMP 2013. Our government has declared their support into five key industries. Dun 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 dun. The runway will be very long, so QES can benefit from this growth. Huh, let's talk about things I don't like about QES. Number one, low profit margin. As I said just now, QES is just a distributor or middleman. On top of that, they help you to do value add or other customization service. So this kind of business, uh, profit margin won't be very high one. 
because the entry of barrier is not very high when compared to other semicon players in the higher part of the value chain so in a way we can say that their competitive advantage is not very strong or sustainable number two qs growth is highly dependent on the semiconductor cycle if semicon companies are spending less on capex then qs will have lower sales this can be seen in the testing equipment sold by qs that is going into the memory segment the sales drop a lot but the automotive segment increased a lot so it neutralized the impact the same can be seen in 2018 semiconductor down cycle. QS sales and profit got hit hard at that time. However, the semiconductor industry is still on long term up cycle. And QS has quite good financial to sustain through bad times. So if you are a long term investor, during down cycle is the time for you to start analyzing the company. All in all, Malaysia companies benefited a lot from US and China trade war. Many companies are coming to Malaysia to set up their semiconductor business. So QES will still be fine for the immediate future because of the increase in KBEX for semiconductor industry in Malaysia. Anyway, that's all for today's video. Stay safe and stay strong investing. I will see you in the next video. This video is sponsored by Sifu Investing, a social media platform for investment. The app is quite good if you are looking for investing ideas or if you are looking for an investment community to discuss about stock ideas. I also like to use their news function so I can check the news about the specific company all in one place. Analyst reports from all brokers are also uploaded in the app and you can read for free. Easy peasy.